I've got our uh, new cables. Um, these are from the OEM that Tesla uses, um, the correct length that we need for the camera switcher. Uh, I've got a prototype of the brand new switcher board. Um, when you guys get this, it will have a nice plastic case around it, uh, but we're using this one today just to do some testing uh, with the nice universal uh, blue Z-style connectors, water blue. Um, and that comes with the remote control. Whoop. If I don't drop it, the remote control here, um, where you can use the D button uh, to switch between the camera feeds uh, like so. Um, and then you can also use this to program your home link in the car uh, to use the screen to switch. And then I've also got um, a prototype of the CAN bus kit. Uh, and this plugs into the OBD port on your car under your uh, steering wheel. Um, and then allows you to plug in uh, the camera switcher directly in to detect the reverse signal. So if you've got all these components, uh, you should have a kit that looks something like, like this. Start by opening the front. some trim pieces here. So we'll start with this back trim piece here. You just slide your hands under it, just pops right up. And then the back edge has some clips too, just pops right up. Once you get all the clips out, this part's a little flexible, you can sort of bend it. And then it just lifts straight up. This left panel here, unscrew the foot stop, and the same thing just pops right up your fingers. It's right out. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Actually, you know what? We'll just do the front piece because we just need to take this off. Um, so we'll just lift this out so we can clear this. This piece comes out as well. Some Velcro in the front here, so be gentle as you get toward the middle. Put it up. Show you guys, got the industrial Velcro on the bottom. Okay. So that's all the disassembly we have to do. So the goal now we're going to take our camera module and we're going to mount this down here. You can mount it to your license plate assembly. I'm actually going to mount it on the lower side of the bumper here, at least temporarily, until I have a better plan. So there's a rubber gasket under here. I don't know if you can see it. I had to look in from the top all the way at the back. That's what we need to pass this wire down through. Got a little tape. If you have plastic tape, it's probably better than the metal fish tape, but we'll do it with the metal for now. So if you come down here, you just want to find that seam. And if you move it with your fingers, you can sort of see the air. You feed it right through, just like that. And then if you look down the front, you see where we come out with it. Okay, great. Now, I'm just going to pull this right on up through. Alright, now on the AP2, um, the Autopilot 2 and Autopilot 2.5, we're going to run the cable to the passenger side of the car. If you have an Autopilot 1, or a pre-autopilot vehicle, you'd be running it to the driver's side. Um, so we'll pull this cable out right here. And do our tape. All right, now we got a nice little tip about removing these um, plastic pieces. So you get a small flathead screwdriver and pop it under this little purple part on the connector. Pry straight up. It will actually release. And when you do that, this little purple part can come right off, hopefully. Pull straight out, don't lose it, you're gonna need this. Um, 
And now that you have that out, the plastic piece should remove from the shell. There's one little piece here, this little um, piece on top. You just need to lift that above the metal tab and then this plastic part will slide right off the connector. Um, and that, when you make it skinny like that, just down to the crimp piece, will actually allow us to fit through this channel without having to jam it through the crack. So hopefully uh, that makes this installation a lot easier and smoother. So, um, actually in an effort to save some time here, we're gonna use our old cable as a fish wire for the new one. Um, but you can use your fish tape, come right through this slot. Um, and then what we'll do is tape our, our cables to the fish line. So we've got our new cable here. This is the custom length OEN cable with the Z-type connectors. And I'm gonna do the same thing that we just did on that other cable. I'm gonna do that to this one. This is the one you guys will be doing. Same thing, just pry that purple part straight up, comes right off, and then lift this tab gently to slide it over the metal piece and pull that straight off the front. All right, so you're gonna tape this cable to your fish tape, hopefully. Um, but since I've already got it run through here, we're gonna try and use the old cable to pull the new cable. and keep this skinny because it is a pretty tight fit in the middle there. So I am going to go end to end and not go side to side with it. We'll tape it up really good so that we can relieve strain on the connector. So definitely come back and tape to the actual wire and not just to the connectors so that you're not putting strain on the crimped connectors while you're pulling it through. And definitely make sure you tape that middle section really well. But again, try and keep it skinny because this needs to fit through a pretty slim spot. So let's try this. Let's see how we do. So nice and skinny, hopefully secure tape job. All right, okay, pull it toward you. Okay, so just make sure you keep it on the top part of that channel. If you do that, it does actually fit. So we've got a new cable here that we fed through. Um, we've got our camera here. We're gonna plug that in in a second, but let's just do a little bit of cable management here. So I'm gonna run this up behind some of this stuff here. So we we'll come just under this metal bracket so we can make sure that it stays out of the way and doesn't get pinched. Um, same thing in this next one. Just gonna run it right behind. Okay. So, just ran that right behind there and then up here what I'm going to do is run it right into that gap and run it right under the edge of this front liner here. Um, so just gently lift this up. It shouldn't have to unscrew it or anything. Just tuck it right under until it's behind that bracket there. It's nice and snug. And now this is just going to plug in right to our front camera. Great. It's got some rubbing alcohol. We've got these Scotch industrial Velcro pads. We'll just clean this spot down here. Make it nice and clean so that our adhesive sticks, let it dry. So let's say that's about center. Okay. 
and then we'll just pull that front camera back down into our slot and line it up. Good for now. Excellent. And then I'm just going to pull the excess right back into the cabin so that we can store it all in one place. The next step is to take our cable that we ran here and pass it into where we're going to mount our switch. So this little trim piece here just comes off. Get your trim tool in at the top. It's got three automotive clips that hold it in place. Just pop out. Two at the top, one at the bottom. And four, I guess. One, two, three, four. Let this hang down. Just be careful you don't put tension on that cable. Um, so now, this little trim piece is where we're going to pass this. This plastic piece here comes off. Uh, it's easier when you take this piece and this piece off first, but for our purposes, we're actually just going to pass it behind it, so we're not going to remove it fully. So this piece here comes out, comes up, comes out. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna pass it right behind this rubber gasket into the cabin here. And I'm also gonna pass it right behind this trim piece. So it's inside this compartment and that's where we're gonna go to make our connections uh, into the camera switcher. You pull out the tabs, there's just a little hole in there. You want to make sure you line it up properly. Excellent. That should be all there is to that part. Just make sure you put this trim piece back here. best you can. It'll be a little bitty bulge from where the cable passes through, but that's okay. The door shouldn't have any problem with that. For now, I'm going to tuck this in, and then we'll go ahead and take out the glove box next. So, the next step on the Autopilot 2, Autopilot 2 Plus cars, is to remove the glove box. So to do that, we start with this trim piece here. So this just snaps right off, automotive clips. So we're going to pull from this side first. Give it a little tug, open the glove box to make this a little easier, and then just continue our way around. If you've got your trim tools, you can get them in here, help apply a little bit of leverage, give you a little gap to pull in. This just comes out, don't be scared, it is a scary sounding thing, but it just comes right off. And then from the screen here, you're going to kind of want to pull out and toward you. Maybe. <laughs> there, one more. There we go. Um, and so again, you'll see that these clips all face toward the front of the car, right? So we release two here, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13 total clips, and they all face toward the front of the car. So you really wanna pull this straight out toward the back of the car uh, to remove that trim piece. Um, okay, so next up, we have to remove the actual glove box. So to do that, I believe there's six screws, three in the top, three in the bottom. Um, so we'll just loosen them up here. These are the T20 Torx screws. One, two in the middle. Three. Now there is another trim piece below the glove box that I do believe we'll need to remove in a second. The bottom screws. Also, I do recommend that you empty your glove box before you do this makes it a little easier all right so now this is screw number four okay 
Okay, now if we're five, down on the left hand side, and then the six screws right in the middle. So actually before we do those last two, just right under the glove box, this trim piece here, pops straight out. And again, toward the back of the car, one, two, three, four, five, six clips. And that one should let us get to this middle screw right in here. And six down here. Once you have all those screws out, the whole glove box just sort of slides right out. Um, let me actually take this one screw here. There it goes. Okay. So just be careful because you've got a couple of wires on the left-hand side here um, that you need to release. So the first one all the way on the left here, there's just a, a pinch at the top and the bottom, slides right out. And then this one here, just one little clip this is the light connector, so one little clip on the light. If you've replaced the lights, you know how these come out. Uh, and then the third one is down here on the left-hand side, and that just pulls straight out. So those three wires come out, and then the whole glove box is, is free. So now that you've got the glove box out, uh, you can see we've got the autopilot engine tucked up under here. So this is the cable that we just routed from the front of the car. So we've got it nice behind the gasket. I've got all the slack on this side now. It's gonna come again on top of the autopilot engine here. So we kind of get down. You see there's a bracket here. There's some fan supports and there's another bracket here. So I'm gonna run it just above this bracket. Grab it with my hand. Run it just above the other bracket as well. Right here. If I could see, that'd be great. And that will just keep it sort of out of the way. So we can then pull it down and get it where we need it. Again, there are fans on top of that autopilot engine, so just make sure that you stay clear of them. Um, all right, so I'm gonna tuck this right behind this black thing here, and we're gonna put our camera switcher right behind here. We have the giraffe here, it's part of the CAN bus kit. We have the panda, and we have the cable that you're gonna use to connect to the camera switcher. Uh, so the first thing you're gonna do is take your panda out, Plug that into your giraffe. It just presses on. It's a nice tight fit, tight fit. So just be a little careful as you do it. Make sure it's on there all the way. Um, and then we've got this cable here, and this is going to basically plug into the GPIO port. So if you're looking at it this way, it's this port on the right here, uh, like this. And this other end is going to plug into your camera switcher, and they should be labeled. Uh, the orange cable is your reverse signal, the brown cable is your ground, the brown white is your V plus, your 12 volts. Um, so what we'll do first is remove a screw under here so that we can access a uh, place to run the wire. And that screw that we're going to remove is right along the edge here. I don't know if you can see it. Get under there. Right there, that screw. So we'll pull that screw out and then uh, tuck that cable up right underneath here. That's a T20 torque screw. And 
you do have a knee airbag underneath here, so just make sure when you're tucking the cable up that you tuck it toward the steering wheel, not toward the airbag, so it's just clear of that bag. Um, so the other thing we're going to want to do here is just pull out this cubby, if you've got one of these, and that'll just let us more easily run the wire over to the other side. And to do that, you basically just pull down along the front edge, straight down. There's two sort of automotive clips, and then just pull straight out. So these two clips here, and these tabs release from the back, and it just slides out. And once you've got that free, you've got a nice path where we can route the wire over to the other side on the autopilot too uh, to plug into the camera switcher. So this guy, remember, is going to plug into our OBD port right under here. So make sure you have enough slack in this wire to make that connection. Okay, so there's a little gap in the corner here. It's a little tricky to squeeze it in behind here so the easier thing to do is actually just to feed it into that little hole so if you sort of fold the wires back like this and just stick it into this little gap in the corner here you should be able to get it down and under your your mcu see it popping out here and then you can sort of just feed it in once you get enough cable to reach over um, you can tuck it back up in here into this gap again toward the steering wheel away from the airbag is happy and then we'll go over to the other side and plug it in so we're going to take our wire and land it on the first three connections here uh, you'll see the first one here is labeled plus 12v then ground and then sw1 switch one that's going to be for the reverse feed so you're going to connect your brown white plus v to the plus 12v you're going to connect your brown to the ground and your orange to the switch one um, and also keep in mind that on the production kits, you're going to have a much nicer case than this. But uh, one thing that they did forget to do was to make a hole for this button here. Uh, and you're going to need to use that button to pair it to your remote. Um, so you'll have a little remote like this. Actually, let me get the one with the battery in it. Show you both. Um, so if you have yours and you push the button, you'll notice that nothing happens. Uh, you do need to install a 27A battery. When you have that in there, you should see the little blue light light up. Uh, and you're going to want to pair the D button uh, using this switch to your camera switcher. And to do that, you do need to take it apart. So make sure you don't forget to do that before you button it all up. Uh, but for now, I'm going to land these wires onto this terminal block. Again, that plus 12V goes into the first slot here. Set plus 12V, ground. Tighten it a little too much. My poor seats. And reverse to switch one, the orange wire here. When you've got that all on correctly, it should look something a little bit like that. Uh, and then the next thing we're going to do is just put this all back together, plug in our camera wires, and then we'll test everything out. Now, the autopilot engine is here. Let's see. The wires there, the wires on this side. The one that we want to remove that black one right here, purple, because that is our video feed for the display. So this is the one, two, three, third connector from the back, and you do kind of have to hook your finger above it uh, to get it off. So I'm going to go ahead and get in there and do it since it's a little tricky from my current position.
um, you're gonna have just this short connector here that's coming from the main screen that you will just unplug from the autopilot engine. And then you're gonna take your new cable, this short one here, and you're gonna plug that right into the autopilot engine where you unplug that other cable. So again, third connector from the back and that just plugs straight in. To hear that nice click. So now you've got this feed from the front screen, this feed from the autopilot engine, this is your rear camera feed, and the cable from the new front camera here. And we're gonna plug all of those in to our camera switcher. Basically, just mounted our camera switcher in here using that um, industrial Velcro. So it's just attached to the other side of this with the connectors visible here and our cable coming down here uh, to go over um, to make our connection for power and reverse. So I've got my new short cable from the autopilot engine here. That's going to go into our rear uh, connector on the camera switcher, which is this one at the back. Okay, so that's my rear feet plugged in here. Um, now you've got your center camera. This is your black cable, um, the short whip that comes from the screen. And that goes into the screen connection, the middle plug here, black in the middle. And then your front camera goes into this third connector closest to you, like so, maybe. Great. So you got all three. Um, plugged in there. Now for cable management, you can just take these cam cables and tuck them behind um, your camera switcher. There's plenty of room over here so you can just sort of pull them down. Take a little excess cable and tuck it right behind here. And that will get it out of the way. We'll loop it up right next to our camera switcher that should keep it out of the way from the glove box when we reinsert it in a moment just loop these right over the top okay great all right so when you get your camera switcher um, hopefully this will come with batteries in it but mine did not um, so if you push this button and you see this little light here doesn't light up it should light up blue um, that probably means there's no battery inside. The battery is a weird one. It's smaller than a AAA. It's a 27A battery. It's a 12 volt battery. Um, and so what you gotta do is you take three screws out the bottom of your remote. Be very careful that you don't lose them. Um, put your battery inside there. See that that lights up blue now, and then we can reassemble this. Three screws in the back. The other thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you pair this to your camera switcher before you button everything up because you need to access the button that's actually on the camera switcher in order to pair it. Okay, so now you see that when we push the buttons, that lights up blue. Um, so we got to use this D button here for the pairing. Um, there's a small button on your camera switcher. So to pair it, you're gonna to wanna to press the button on your camera switcher once, the light goes red. Press and hold the D button on your remote until you see it blink and then go out. And then you should be able to test it. So the D button here, press it, and you should see your camera feed switch to the rear. Press it again, you should see it switch to the front 
uh, and then you know you've got it paired correctly. Um, you can also then come up to here once you've got that paired um, and go to your home link and go to your home link settings here. And we can, I'm actually going to delete this one, add a new home link. So we're going to call this camera switch. Create home link and click start. And it'll say, please wait, getting ready to program. This may take up to a minute. Now, once it says record signal for remote, searching for signal, press and hold the D button. And then once it says signal detected, you can keep uh, until it says recording complete and then tap continue and click save. Um, and we can verify that this works now. They come in here, going to home link, tapping camera switch. And if it does work, you should see the camera feed switch correctly. Okay, everything's installed, everything's working. Now we gotta put everything back together. So first step, glove box goes back in. We've got our three cables. Um, a flat one here with the red and white wire that's gonna go into our side connector here. I gotta tuck this in get to it do, 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 do. I can see it that presses straight in um, and then this bigger connector here with the black and white wires goes right here just clicks right in and then this light connector with the red and black wires goes right into the top clicks right in. So you get your three wires and this whole assembly just scoots right on in. You want to line up these pins here at the top. So these just go into these holes. Helps you sort of get everything right where it needs to be. And then you can go ahead and screw everything right back in. Remember six screws, three, three at the top, three at the bottom. Uh, the bottom ones do have that trim piece that will cover them. So I'll start at the top here. Um, that is not the right hole. Sorry. Two. Forward on the bottom here, bottom left. This struggle is real. Okay, open the glove box up. It's a good test to make sure that your switch works, that you wired it up right. Five. Here. And finally, six will go right down the middle there. So again, one, two, three, four five, six. So that's all the screws. Now the trim pieces. Start with the bottom piece here. Um, this lines up right with the glove box, essentially. 
So you get these clips, you can kind of guide them in from the front. Once you got them lined up, then you just sort of press. To get it all clicked in. Excellent. About the same thing. Do for this trim piece here. Again, remember all of these clips push toward the front of the car. You're pushing at a different angle. You're probably doing it wrong. So just kind of line everything up before you click anything in. And once you got all the things lined up, push straight toward the front of the car, and that's it. That's really all there is to it. Um, just make sure the glove box still functions. Good. Okay, so lastly, make sure our cable's nice and clean here. Tuck this back in. We'll plug that in. Just snap that piece right back in. And that's all you gotta do on the inside of the car. And the last step here is to just put our trim pieces back onto the front. Um, so we've got this front piece here again, get it snapped in, and then get this center clip aligned and start with the center one, that automotive clip, and then press it down on the edges, make it nice and secure, make sure that industrial velcro sticks, get the right apron here, passenger side apron. So this is going to just snap right back down. Like the front of the police is that it snap right back down. There we go. And again, once you line it up, just press it right down. You'll feel all the snaps just snap right into place. Make sure your service loop tag is sticking out. If you get into an accident, your first responders know where to cut the power. And then this again, slide that over, bend it a little bit, and tuck it in. And then that just snaps down the place. So make sure you clear your washer fluid area. Last piece, the hood stop, screws back in, screws clockwise ready tidy. This does set the gap for your frunk, so if your frunk is up a little higher, you can not screw it all the way in, but I usually start with it pretty much all the way down, and then you can back it out and adjust if you need to. That's it, car's back together, camera switchers, good to go.